Good morning, everybody. How is everybody doing this weekend? This is the 30th of July and with the price report number 29. So let us dive deep into it, shall we? So I'm going to discuss three things. The first of one, which is a hot topic doing rounds today, is of US officially in a recession. And the second and third of which are going to be the price analysis on both diving into the on-chain data that got triggered a couple of days back and some technical analysis. So uh, let's talk about, just for our viewers, what is a recession? A recession is basically a broad-based weakness in the economy. And you know there is also a traditional definition of recession, which if I remember correctly, is a, is a significant decline in the economic activity that lasts a few months and marked by two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. And as we might know, US had reported its second quarter of negative GDP growth, which I indicated in the previous report. They declared it on the 29th of July yesterday. Uh, the US economy shrank at an annual rate of 1.6% in the quarter one. And now it's announced that it declined by 0.9% in quarter two. So this is a recession, right? Yeah, I think so unofficially. But it's also important for the US to announce that uh, officially. The White House is reminding people that we are not in a recession, citing that we are creating almost 400,000 jobs a month. And uh, well, they may have a point, uh, but it's also important to understand the midterms elections are coming up in the US and they want to play safe. So, um, you know, also to point out, uh, if you see globally, the, the fears of recessions have constantly grown as the Fed continues to hike the interest rates aggressively to fight inflation. And uh, also the economic data has been quite mixed of late. So I think the conditions in this economy are quite unique, as is in every kind of you know recession in the past. But a few points that come to my radar that I want to rant about is um, you know a couple of things that uh, one is the borrowing has become more expensive with the interest rates going up. So you know there is less money to invest, and also the housing markets are cooling off, as we can see. So it's a, it's a pretty much a dry kind of an economy as we speak. But on the other side, you would also notice that. Uh, there are more people eating at the restaurants. It's, it's sometimes important to see these granular, uh, you know, macro uh, and microeconomic things that more people are traveling, eating at the restaurants. You might not even get space in the restaurants during the weekends. And, you know, that doesn't really happen in a recession, right? So I, I think 2022 and uh, is going to be a great year of travel. Uh, but more importantly, what are the markets going to do going forward? I think the practical answer is um, job markets. So the question to be asked is, are people going to keep their jobs? And if so, can they continue earning their income in a steady fashion? So, you know, these are the things that are going to mark an important uh, juncture in the markets sentiment going ahead. So moving ahead, let's discuss about the what's the market sentiment looking right now as. So the, as we know, the market had rallied by, uh, you know, 20-30% uh, in the last few, week or two. Um, and this was also in anticipation of the uh, news about the quarter two GDP numbers. Yes, we are likely in an unofficial inflation. However, um, this was not a shocker. This was not a surprise to the market participants. And this was in line with the expectation of the markets. And also, if you see uh, Elon Musk tweeting uh, with 102 million uh, Twitter followers that Tesla sold, uh, you know, 75% uh, of the Bitcoin stash, that did not move the markets a bit. So this is adding to the uh, fuel to fire of the greed. Uh, the next in line I want to discuss about is the realized price because uh, this is something important as we speak. The line that you see in blue is the price of Bitcoin and the orange line that you see is uh, marking something called the realized price, uh, which is the also coincides with the 200 week moving average, which is about 21,000, 22,000 levels. So what has happened is uh, recently is that we have come back above the uh, realized price. And what this 
in a nutshell means is when the price of BTC is above this orange line, the realized price, that means in aggregate, the market participants are in profit. And the reverse is also true when we dip down below this, the market participants are incurring a paper loss on average, right? So uh, while this has gone back up above this, uh, people are always also looking for an inflation hedge and Bitcoin looks like uh, a place to go. So they are parking the capital because, you know, we are flirting above this, uh, this orange line, uh, which is the realized price. And historically, this realized price has gone back up. So it seems like a, a, a nice bet for the long term for investors. The next in line is the MVRVZ score. Uh, this is something I have touched upon before. But this chart is a complement with the previous chart of the realized price where uh, what you basically need to see is this brown line when this goes back above this uh, goes goes to the pink territory that has marked historically an overbought zone and similarly when we enter this green territory we have marked the bear zone and interestingly enough if we look back into the history during the COVID crash and during the bear market 2018 and 2016 bear markets once we enter once we exit this green territory this bear zone we have rallied and that is the same case this indicator got triggered just a couple of days back and we have moved out of this green zone whether we're going to come back again into this is a question to be asked i don't know but we have moved out so probability wise there is a possibility for us to rally in the weeks ahead the next in line is uh, I want to just compare the uh, technical analysis charts of the S&P 500 and the crypto markets. If we see the the highs that we made in the end of previous year to the lows that we made this year, we crashed about 23% in the stock markets. Whereas in the crypto market so far, we have crashed about 75%. That's quite a you know good indication for what is a risk of asset. While the opposite is also true, uh, from the recent weeks, we have rallied about 12% in the stock markets, whereas in the crypto markets, we have rallied about, oh, I think it's 20, 30. Oh, wow. It was about 40%. So, you know, this is where the wealth generation is. People are flopping, flocking from the boring stock markets and parking a portion of their wealth in the crypto markets. So uh, the volatility, you know, is a psychology that, uh, you know, brings people into the ecosystem. So, uh, however, on a, on a weekly basis, we are um, in an, you know, we are still in a, uh, how do you say that, the oversold territory, but on a daily basis, we are in overbought territory. So, in the days ahead, there is a good chance for us to, a good chance for us to have some kind of correction. The next in line is the US XMR USD chart. Uh, I see, interestingly enough, we are forming a cup and handle formation. What that means is when the price goes and forms a resistance levels, comes back, forms a support, and goes back again to those resistance levels, then that is the cup. And then when it comes back, it comes back to a higher low, which typically was found to be around $120 and also uh, the levels have been talking about $180 as a support. So we come back towards that and then we stay in a range, consolidate, and then we move back higher. And the price target that I see is about $400. That's uh, something to do with uh, 30 to 60% of the price range of the cup is what we rally towards uh, in after the handle is formed, but we need to consolidate. But again, I'm seeing around $180 as a price resistance and $120 is great support. And it's important for, for us to reach these levels and rally with really, really good volumes. So that's what I'm keeping an eye on. And the last thing in line is the US inflation numbers. The uh, inflation peaked about 9.5%. The RSI is indicating that the inflation has to come down and the Fed also raised the interest rates. So all in line looks like Bitcoin likely bottomed, but we need to have more data going forward. Uh, that is all from my side uh, for this weekly price report. I hope you enjoyed and have a great weekend ahead.